So this is the buckle. It's got a 10 inch bar on there. Absolutely perfect for the, for the smaller jobs. Uh, 26 cc. You've got your safety bar to get it working. For I think 85 pound is what I've paid for this and it does the job fantastically. You'll see me set it up and it starts first time. Um, get three blades with it. That's a big, big recommendation. Right, let's get it out of the box, get it set up and then see it in use. So we've got the unit itself there. You get a mixer for the two stroke, the petrol and the oil. You get a funnel, ear protectors and uh, eye protectors. That's the actual bar. You get three chains, which is primarily the reason why I bought it. There's the protector for the chain when it's on. You get a bag and you also get your instructions. There may have been a toolkit with it when it came, uh, but I can't find that anymore because I've had this for about a month and it's been opened and lying around the garage. But let's get it set up anyway. Found the toolkit, went back down to the garage and there it was. Anyway, this should only take a couple of minutes because it's pretty much just like swapping a blade out when, you, uh, when you're setting it up initially. Take both the nuts off. And we'll need the tool kit to tighten those up. This is what you get in there. So spare part, spark plug, something to set the spark plug out. You've got a sharpener there as well, various bits and pieces. Anyway, once we've taken the nuts off, then it's simply a case of just pull that off. And that shows you your inner workings there. There's your centrifugal clutch, as you can see. Right, let's get the bar. One bar, and that simply goes onto there like that. So you get your chain, the sloping edge of it needs to be facing forward on the top. Drop it over the back of the clutch, like, like so, onto the bar. And then that's it, it's in place now. All right, let's put that on its side. Now when the chain is in the bar, like so, you need to take it out a little bit. This is the adjuster screw. As you can see inside there, what that's going to do is it goes into one of these holes and when you screw it, it will either bring it back and loosen the chain or it'll take it forward and tighten the chain. So that's your adjustment on the fly. Right, so we're going to have to move that back. If I turn it over, put the screw in there, you can see how it's moving it up and down. So we, we want it pretty much down to the bottom. Let's see how it's moving there. And then when you pop this on, right, there we go. So that adjuster's popped into the hole on the bar. You need to make sure that the pin goes into that slot, otherwise it won't go on. And then pop these back on. Won't tighten them yet. So that's when you've got your chain adjustment all sorted. Just put them on with your finger. Make sure the chain is in the bar. And then we'll tighten it with this. So at the moment, you can see that there's too much slack on that. Now as I turn this, we should see that reduce. See it going down there. What have we got now? Maybe just the smidgens more. You don't want it too tight or else the chain won't move, but you don't want it too loose and it coming off. 
So that's about right, that. So when you've adjusted the chain to what you want, just tighten it up. Right, and there we go, all done and dusted. Let's have a look at the unit itself now that the chain's on. Right, so if we have a look on this side, we've already spoken about the tensioner there. Obviously, those are what keep the cover on. This here, that's your safety. So when you're using this, if it kicks back, it's going to knock forward and this is going to cut the chain out. And then to reset it so that you can use it, you just pull it forward. So again, if it kicks back, it knocks out and that's your resetting. There's your on and off. Obviously, there's your pull cable. When you've got your fuel in it, that's your priming pump there. And if we look at these two, you've got your fuel cap and you've got your, your bar lubricator there for your lubricating oil. And that is basically that. Right, let's see it in operation. Okay, so before I can uh, fill the actual chainsaw, we need to mix the fuel up. So that's petrol and then two stroke oil. Uh, use one of these or use the container that it came with and you've got all your mixing solutions. So I'm going to do it at 40 to one there. So you basically fill this up with petrol to, um, to there, one litre of petrol, and then you fill it up with the two stroke oil up to whichever one you want there. So I'm going to do the 40 to one. Right, that's the, the petrol filled up to the one litre setting. Get the oil. And so we're just going to top that up to the 40 to 1. That's basically that. Then give it a shake and you're good to go. So the oil provides the lubrication in a two-stroke engine. So when it's all mixed because there's no oil on the, on the bottom of it. Right, that's done. All right, so we've got the two-stroke fuel now that's mixed and we've also got some chain oil. So let's get that filled up. Put the fuel in first. That's enough of that. Then we'll put the chain oil in. I do recommend that you always use chain oil. It makes everything so much easier. Very thick, very viscous. Right, so we've filled it up, we've got the chain oil in. We'll take the bar off and then we'll start it up. So this hasn't been started before, brand new, out of the box. We'll see how easy it is to start on a very, very cold morning. Okay, so there you can see, you've got to prime it by pumping that. That'll drag the fuel round. And you can see that it's filled up with the fuel. We need to switch it on and we need to pull out the chalk. So there's the chalk and actually says about chalk at the top, start in the middle and then run at the bottom. So that's that. And let's get it started. Put the chalk in a bit. That was absolutely perfect, that. Can't complain about that at all. Right, let's get it used. All right, so that's the tree that we're going to take down there. Not a big one, but it's growing over where some drains are and I don't want any root ingress into them. So let's get that taken down. Okay, so we'll just get it started again. Turn it on. I'll put the uh, chalk up again. Take the cover off. Put the chalk back down a bit.
that's that. Now I'm going to put something in here to kill the stump, <clears throat> but I've also got some uh, some smaller tree branches and things, and I'm going to use uh, a really tiny little battery powered thing. You'll see that in operation now as well. I'm going to use this now, battery powered one, 24 volt. It's absolutely fantastic for small branches, whether you're lopping or whether you're taking these things down. Simply press the button in and away you go. And that is simply a case of right tools for the right job. So I do have um, another couple of chainsaws apart from the mini one and the 10 inch one that we've just bought, the buckle one. Uh, this is a 16 inch one that's under there. That's a... Uh, you can see that one there. That's a performance power one. That's a 16 inch. It's great, uh, but I actually use that when we were building the house and I was notching out for the underfloor heating, I used that one. What I should have had is this 10 inch uh, buckle one. That would have been absolutely perfect. You could just do it with one hand. This is too big for doing that. Great for chopping bigger trees down, but um, the, the buckle one would have been absolutely perfect for notching out. It's certainly not the first buckle power tool that I've had. You can see this leaf blower, which is a, a humongous bit of kit in my uh, very untidy garage but that is absolutely superb. And that's basically what led me to get the chainsaw. 